Connor through. Can you hear us okay, Connor? I think we're good, are we? I think we are. What sort of yeah. week has it been for you? Jeez, hectic. Um, I'm actually out in Barcelona here at the moment. I had to had to get out of the dodge there. It was getting too heavy for me. Um, <laughs> I know, it's just brilliant. Brilliant. Um, unbelievable few days. Just to walk down the town there with the with the um with the trophy there, it was something that kind of drove us on since we last won it. We missed out in in 2020, and everything with it, crowds, everything. So it was it was just unreal to get over the line with it, especially with the group of lads that we have. It's just just special, yeah. And that gold celebration you had putting the arms out. How many times have people done that to you since? <laughs> uh, yeah, we kind of. We, I don't know. What I, th I think at one stage there on, on Monday night. Everyone was just doing this thing in every song, so it was, uh, I don't know whether it was a celebration or, or what it was, but uh, it's funny, actually, my, my three cousins um, came over from Nottingham, they were here in 18 as well, and uh, came over and they were saying, they were saying, look, if you score a goal, I, and I stopped them straight away there, and I said, lads, if I score a goal, it'll be my first one for the year, so what's going on here? <laughs> but, um, but anyway, um, they said, you don't have to do a celebration, so they were just messing around, you should do this, you should do that, whatever it was. I don't know what it was that I just locked eyes with them on the open stand and the, two, the three of them they were doing it so I said I could I'll do it it was kind of at a time where I felt like we were probably in front so I look at it's a bit of crap grand that it worked yeah. out um, but uh, yeah sure, it was just a bit mad yeah Michael what are those what, what's the probably the Monday is probably nearly better even than the Sunday in a way when you're sitting down with all the boys what's What's that like? Just knowing that everything you've been through throughout the year, all the training, all the hard work is is all kind of paid off. You're kind of just sitting there. You don't even need to talk, really. You're just kind yeah. of soaking it all in. Yeah, like sure. On on the Sunday, it's a bit mad. Like you know, we had a parade. There was a parade organised for us there. Pipe band going down the main street of Gory. It's probably it's probably the best town in Ireland to do that because it's just straight down the whole town. It's it's uh, it's just class and the people, all the people coming up to you and. People were coming out in the streets. It was it was just unbelievable, and um, I think sure you've probably seen footage of the of the the Wexford homecoming when we came back in nineteen. It's that's that's kind of you know everyone always says go to Gory because of the street. It's a big open street, and bodies just flood into it. But um, no, it was just just special, and um, I suppose I suppose the big thing that we were saying was. You know, on the Monday, everyone is kind of whoever whoever is there is there. You know, everyone else is is kind of gone to work and, and all that kind of crack and normality is resumed. But it's just nice to have, you know, the club people there and the stalwarts there and the and the stalwart drinkers probably too. So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's great to be just with the lads and and you know you're you're just reminiscing on the year that's passed and the game was on there in the complex at two o'clock and at five o'clock and the whole lot and our junior game was on in between them and. You know, it's just just nice to have those moments as a group. You know, someday for the club, all told, Connor, like winning two county finals in one day. Ah, oh, sure, crazy. I was actually saying we, we only arrived down say about two or three minutes left in the junior A game, and um, you know you kind of get a sense of it. I remember in in nineteen as well with Wexford, we were going up on the train and the miners won, and we're saying, "Geez, like, you know, if if we don't win, it'll be a bit of a downer, like regardless, because yeah. obviously everyone's going to look at the at the senior." And I remember. We normally always go together. Myself, uh, Lee Kinsley, Crow Cullum would have been involved in both panels, and they obviously had to go down earlier. So it was just myself, Charlie McGookin, and Jack Cullum went down on Sunday. And we were just—they were saying in the WhatsApp group, save, you know, save two seats. Like, don't bring anyone else because if you if we win, we're all going home together. So, um, yeah, it was, it was just unreal for the club. And you know, you have extra bodies there, you have extra players there, and everyone's celebrating. You know, there was one stage there I didn't even know where the Bob Bow was. I just had the Junior A Cup there for. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, sorry. but uh, yeah, no, it was just hectic, just hectic, uh, but just brilliant, yeah, really, really good. And in terms of your full year, Connor, like you had a child before the start of the season, your, yourself and your partner, what's that been like adjusting to that? Yeah, sure, it's been heavy enough, um, to be fair, I, I owe an awful lot of, uh, I did, that's why I said I'll book the old trip to Barcelona, you know, <laughs> give her a shoes as well, because, you know, it's a, it's a heavy commitment now. I remember going up to a Walsh Cup game in in, uh, in January, probably about seven or eight days after Melissa had the baby. And, you know, you're probably coming home thinking, is it a good idea to do that or whatever it was? But you're, I suppose in ways you're, you're just trying to, you know, if you're, if you're a week not there, you're probably a week behind and then a week to get back and then a week to get up to speed. You're, you're, you know, you just always have that in your head. So, um, look, it was difficult. The year in general, it was difficult for Wexford. Um, but it was... Uh, it was just brilliant to be able to come home, go back to the lads in the club, have a full month there, albeit we probably didn't want it, but 
you know, it, it meant that we were out way earlier than expected with Wexford, but to go back and just get in with the lads and, and you know, everyone's families kind of coming together, even at times, you know, during the year at Wexford, the club lads were always there for me and, and there for Cottle and there for Charlie and stuff and we were going through a tough run um, and no more so, again, with, with Melissa and, and, and parents of all of us and close families. Um, actually, my mother broke her two ankles on Saturday night. I don't know if you heard that, but yeah, so she didn't get to the game. She's still struggling away, so um, oh. it was a massive shame. Hey, I tell you, we were we were going to um, going over to Tesco to get a few bits there. We were coming back in the door, and she just rolled one ankle and tried to save oh, herself. Jesus. So, um, look, to be honest, we just have an unbelievable support network um, between family and close friends, and and just uh, and just everyone around in the club in general. It's really good for that. So. Uh, it's been it's been tough, all right, at times, but definitely makes it all worth it when you you see Jude there, you have the cup and and the whole lot. And I think the lads all bought into that for myself and Cottle as well. You know, quarter final, semi finals, they were saying like we'll make sure we get you marching around the band with Jude and Reen, and that was really, really special. And that was kind of me and Cottle's thing as well throughout the whole club championship. Like we really wanted that. Like and you know, Kelly the boy from Clan or whatever it was. That's the that's the thing that normally rings around. Um, the first tune they play, and I remember that that was, I'd say, it's more Spotify hits now than than, uh, than any other York in the last number of days. So, um, no, it was just really special, and I owe an awful lot to my close family and friends, as I do every year, really, to be honest, for for the commitment. And um, it was just was a, a mad one this year. What's been the biggest shock to the system with fatherhood, or is there any little yarn you could tell us where it was particularly difficult or funny? Yeah, well, I remember um, we went down to play. What day was it? Oh, the league final. Played the league final, so normally we wouldn't play really any league with, with, with Corey. And when we, we were knocked out with Wexford, we went down to play the league final, and the baby was teething and stuff like that. And you know the way normally you'd be thinking, oh, no, me night two nights before, and me night before, you know, try to get a good night. <laughs> I'm not you, lads. If I got one hour that night, I swear to God, it was the roughest night we've ever had. It was that Saturday evening then the game was on. I remember Melissa saying to me about two o'clock, do you want to go in and get a bit of a bit of a sleep there just before the game? And I knew if I went in, I'd probably wait and make, wake up at all. So I uh, stick it out. Um, so you just, I, it was then I realised like I need to stop worrying about, you know, night sleep and the whole lot, you know, operating one or two hours to go play a league final. And it worked out grand for me. So not too bad. <laughs> so I think we, I, probably over the years, I've got hung up on, you know, trying to get every single thing right and, so much stuff is, is taking out your power now with, with, with how the baby is and, and stuff like that. So that's that's probably the, the number one thing that sticks out to me anyway. Yeah, Bernie's a new dad, so I say this all the time. Yeah, minute, yeah, well, yeah <laughs> no, I was actually I was actually chatting to, to Brian Malone from Wexford, Connor, there a couple when he retired, I'd say it was. And I said, like, what was it like playing county when you after you had the kids? And he said, Well, it probably made me realise that you know, everything I was doing, I was probably maybe going a bit too far. I didn't maybe need all the sleep or whatever I was getting. But sometimes it survived. I've had a couple of days where I've got out playing matches there recently after a couple of hours sleep and you're just dead on your feet. You're gone. You're you're a corpse before the, before the game even starts. Then other games, you feel great. It's kind of a bit... Uh, it's kind of a bit hit and miss, but you're listening, it's great. Uh, I, I can't imagine what it was like for the parade. I'd say that was some buzz. You must have been absolutely buzzing for that. Yeah, just special, like, and, you know, just even after the warm-up, I, I probably, uh, you know, I just, I don't know, I just really wanted to win this so badly, probably more than any other year, and, I, you know, the lads made, kind of, nominate me to be captain for this the third year, um, and I remember, I remember just everything just, like, really, I don't know, it was just overpowering there in the warm-up, and I just heard the band in the middle of the field before while we were doing the warm-up. I had to nearly just tell the boys there were poking around in trees there, go ahead. I need to get a bit of water there to compose myself a little bit. Just just because I knew what was at stake for us as a group. And, you know, it was just special then to come over then and, and for Melissa to hand, hand Jude over beforehand in, in the in the parade. Now, we went on the open side, all right, and I don't think I've heard her cry like that for a good while. <laughs> anyway, it was it was just really nice. She settled down then again. The wind was blowing down and obviously she was... We were we were on the on the you know top of our queue, so the band was right in front of us. But uh, it just seemed to get that little bit louder with the wind blowing down the field. But um, yeah, it was just really special. And I know Carl Carl is it, there's I think there's eight or ten days only between our two babies, so we're uh, we were in the same boat there. Um, and as I say, it was kind of a, a little thing for us this year to to really push on and 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 have those little moments, you know. 
It's hard to believe that you're on the go with the Intercounty since 2013, if I have it correctly. And you're you're still you're not long gone 28, are you? Uh, just gone just gone 28 there, July. Yeah, just gone 28 in July. So uh, yeah, it's been a hectic time. All right, it's been a lots of ups and downs. But um, yeah, sure. Look at it. it's it's uh, seems like an age, and it seems like it just goes like that as well at times. You know, and you, just, you look back on it like your debut and going out and hurling. All happens in a flash, and then. You know, there's you get years like this year, and you're thinking, "Jesus, that was the longest year of all time," even though it was the shortest. You know, <laughs> but uh, um, yeah, it's just just crazy to think that it's 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 uh, such a you know a, a big chunk of your whole life in in um, in, in involved in Wexford. You know, what was it like this year, Connor, at Wexford? I'd imagine it was very tough, particularly after the the Westmead game. I'd imagine that I think it was only a week, was it? I'd imagine that was probably one of the longest weeks of your life. I'd say you're trying to like I don't know. You, you're nearly avoiding people or not wanting to see people and avoid people at all costs, yeah. Um avoid people at all costs. That was that was an emotional week. Um you know the the best looks that you get there when you're in a garage there or you're you know, you're walking down the street there or something and you're going, you're not gonna hold out at that week. I tell you that it was you need to do go do it now and that's it. And you know, we we, we put ourselves in that position. Um after Westmead it was obviously such a shock and would have been such a shock anyway. If you know for for us and for you know I think it was for them and they were due, you know they 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 were well deserving of their winning so for that absolutely no questions there, and um, we were just so disappointed and we knew that we'd a, uh, um, you know a monumental task. Might be gone there, is he? Can you hear him, Shane? I can't. I I might just. Do that thing of kicking him again and hopefully he'll come back again in a second. But yeah, I mean, and we're going to ask him, hopefully Connor can get back online there. But Keith Rossler has been, you know, lined up as the next West uh, Wexford hurling manager and he's the under 20s boss for the last two years. So how, how do you see that appointment? I mean, Albert the Bala, man, he's done it all with Wexford, played for them for so many years and he'll know all the new players coming through as well. Yeah, really think they needed an inside man, I have to say. Um and just, yeah, and no, I just really think they needed an inside man after the last, what are we looking at, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I just think, uh, just from gauging the pulse down there, I think they needed an inside man. I think there'll be plenty of outside voices in the, the coaching ticket from from what I'm led to believe. Um, he obviously served under Davy. I think, the whole way through Davy's reign. Uh, just, Connor, we were just chatting there about about Kate Rossiter taking the job. Um Someone you obviously you obviously heard with. What would you have been your your initial reactions of, of Keith taking the job been? Yeah, sure. Jesus, absolutely delighted for Keith. Um, when, when I first came into the panel, Keith was probably just you know a massive leader in the in the group. Um, the likes of him, Rory Jacob, Richie Kyo, all these lads would have been the stalwarts at the time. And you know, Keith was probably Wexford's you know best hurler in my opinion. For he was you know the hurler in Wexford at the time when when we were. You know, in development squads and stuff like that, and you know, he soldiered a long time when Wexford Wexford Harlem wasn't you know anywhere near what it what it, what it's, it became maybe over the last number of years. And you know, he definitely, I always felt like he was really smart. He always had you know his ideas were always good. He had his head screwed on, and look at he's he's probably shown that over the last while there with the twenties and stuff like that. Um, he's been involved in club teams and stuff, and he's obviously with Owlert, he he would have had a massive say in a dressing room and with managements and stuff like that. So he's He's a he's look at he's an incredible man, good good Wexford man. You know he'd be he'll be hoping that we, he can improve things from from where where they were left uh, last year as well and, and going forward. I think he got three years. I think was it so he'll be um he I'm sure he'll have a, a really big plan in there. And you know what probably probably he's a lot of courage to take it um at this time as well. You know where where we're on the back of you know not a not a wonderful year, probably our worst year since I've I've been involved. So you know he deserves an awful lot of credit for that, and he'll be hoping that. You know, a lot of people give him the backing because, you know, he's he's sticking his neck out in ways as well to 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 get get us back to where we really want to be. You know, mm. and just the, the fact that he is a Wexford man as well is that important? Is that something that there's an appetite for? Um, yeah, well, sure. Look, it's whoever the right man for the job is going to be. To be honest, um, obviously, you know, you know, with a Wexford man, or you know, with a, a lad who's 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 wore a jersey before, he's he knows the feelings, he knows everything like that, um. You know, for me personally, I think it's a great, a great appointment and a great idea. Um, and obviously, he is the right man for the job, and he's bringing all the credentials. He's bringing everything. He, has, he will have his plan in, in place as well. So, um, 
it, it probably is an added bonus too that he is a extra man, you know. Mm. And then just for this year, what, what do you think went wrong this year? Having a clue. Um, I think I think the, the best thing I I I, I don't miss get stuck into the club as quick as I could. Um, I still probably haven't thought about it or processed it, and you know probably. You know, we, we went through a league campaign where we were absolutely riddled with injuries. Um, and I suppose as a group, we probably thought, right, we need to everyone individually get, get right and, and, and try, you know, attack that uh, attack the championship as, as best we could. But to be perfectly honest, we probably, we probably were trying to tell ourselves that we were going to be fine and, and stuff. We've done everything correctly. You know, we just we were just so unfortunate at times with, with injuries. And, you know, we didn't, you know, it wasn't for a lack of effort or anything like that that we, that we did. But... Um, we had the year that we had, but it just I just think there was a couple of things probably that didn't run our way and you know, that that kind of momentum into a championship wasn't there and and uh you know, it's certainly something that we, we need to you know, we can look at a lot of things but we you know, there's there's things there that were so out of our control as well that, you know, we, we just we just we just fell fell accustomed to them when it was you know, it was just a freaky year to be honest. And it like, kind of feels like um this is the peak time for Wexford to really produce. Like you said, you're twenty eight. Lee Chin is probably not too different in age. Matt O'Hanlon, probably 30 or so or something like that. There's a lot of key lads who are at that perfect age have still been at the top of their game, but they have all the experience as well. Yeah, I tell you, I, I, I feel 38. I'm in Ireland that's gone on, but anyway, it's, uh, it's a good complaint. Um, but yeah, like we have a lot of lads there that have kind of soldiered together, probably came into the panel when Keith was actually, you know, heading out the back door. So um, he'll know an awful lot of lads there as well. Um, he, he he soldiered with a couple of us there for a few, only a couple of years, he, like a few other lads, Dee O'Keefe, uh, Lee Moog, Matthew, as you said, Lee, he probably was with them a year or two before before I went into the panel myself. But, um, you know, maybe maybe the stars might align, hopefully. I hope, I hope they do. And I hope that, you know, we, we can we can progress. Um, and because, because I suppose there's, when you look at it, it probably isn't, when you're when you're hitting 10 years now at Wexford, you know that there's never going, not going to be another 10 years in you. So, um you know, any bit of success now is, is is vital for us as a group, really, and that and that kind of core lads who come in around that time. Connor, just want to ask you quickly: Where in Jays did you, did you develop that paw over the years? I don't know. I tell you, I as I said, I I done an interview after the game, and I spent seven weeks trying to get one ball into my hand, and I just the truth. I just I was out around the middle of the field and 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 uh, in the half forward line a lot with the club this year, and you know, underneath pokeouts and stuff, and. Kind of nearly half Christmas myself to Bonner Mar there for for uh, for a while. Everyone was saying you're not scoring, you're not doing this, that, and the other, and I was trying to justify what I was doing on the field. And I was probably going home thinking, what am I doing at all? But um, yeah, look, it, it just I suppose Sunday was just probably a freak day where you know a couple went fell into the hand, and you know I end up just thinking, then sure, fake it every time I just want to go out the hand because you know they're 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 landing and and you know it's it's. You're marking a fella like Shane Rick, who's, who, in my opinion, is one of the best man markers in the country, and um, if not, you know, top three or four. Anyway, in my opinion, he's done, he's he's uh, done a number on, you know, some of the best lads in the country, and um, you know him, Damien, them pulling and dragging out here and there. They're, they're, they're top class men, um, absolutely top class men, and I don't know, it just it just seemed to happen, and you just get days like that. But in general, I suppose the, where where it did come from, maybe is we we're only talking about it there on Monday. Remember being in school and we always used to say no hurls. Eh? So we used, you know, we used to go in up the back pitch and there would be lads there that didn't even hurl and they just wanted to be bullies and go around baiting you. So we used to go up to a tennis court up the back up the back of the school and there'd be one lad with a hurl about 35, 40 yards away and he'd drive it up into the sky as high as he could. And I'm not joking, there'd be 20 lads there. He'd be going in with ripped shirts and after a while we decided then to all wear t-shirts like these, what these white t-shirts underneath your white shirt. So you just could wear that then. If it got ripped, you could just throw your shirt back on then. So um, that's probably where it came from, I'd say. Um, and then just I, just when I first went into the Wexford panel, I remember Liam Dunn, Jar Cush, Billy Barnes, these lads always used to say, like, you know, if you get that ball into your hand as quick as you can, you can, it's kind of, it's yours then, you can do what you want with it. But I thought that was always in my head just to try to get first phase possession. And um, I don't know, it's probably, it's probably got me out of jail because I probably wouldn't be blessed with pace or anything like that. So, uh, if anything that gets me the yard maybe at the odd time yeah and final question for me Connor. just how good Limerick have been the last four years and you've played against them a few times like does it feel like the gap to them is kind of narrowing a little bit a lot of teams have got closer I'm not saying they're not still the kings they obviously are but like can teams aspire to take them down next year 
hundred percent. If teams don't, I think uh, I think they'd be you shouldn't be going into the championship at all. Um, you know, we've I've, we played them in twenty fourteen and haven't played them since the championship, which is crazy because we've played everybody else. So we only played them once, and that was kind of before the whole regime of John Kiley and the whole lot came in. Um, and uh, we played them in the league and stuff, and, and you know they're. They probably were without a couple of lads here and there, so we've never actually played against a probably full strength Limerick team, which is again, as I said, it's it, it's crazy to think because he play, he seemed like he played everybody. But um, look at you look at Kilkenny. We've probably had Kilkenny's number the last two years, and they end up in in all our finals competing by a point and then beaten by. I'm not sure how much they were beaten by, you know, in the year just gone. But you know, Clare seemed to be the red hot favourites to be the ones to go tip them, tip area around the place, you know. If, as I said, if you, if you don't feel like you, you can beat anyone, well, then you probably shouldn't be anyone either. And that comes as an individual and, and then comes as a collective unit. But look, at we'd be hoping that at some stage you'd meet him in an Ireland final or somewhere like that or an Ireland semi final and not have to meet him through a qualifier or anything like that. So um, we have enough to be worrying about now in, in, in Leinster, in, in Galway, Dublin, and Kilkenny, and, and the likes of West Mead and all these, these as I know they went down and stuff. but We've enough to be worried about in Leinster now than we do in <laughs> than we do in Munster. So, okay. Well, look, Connor, you've been brilliant with your time. Really appreciate it and enjoy that trip to Barcelona. Yeah, thanks very much. I go for now. Walk around New Camp there. I think it's been demolished. So, so I'll see what the crack is in here. <laughs> Good luck, Connor. Connor. All right, lads. Thanks very much. Good luck. Good luck. Okay, great to have Connor there. Porter Porter straight in with a comment. Great win over Kilkenny for them. A lot of pressure for that game. So hopefully Wexford get more consistent. Yeah, on the back of that West Mead loss. That was a huge win as well. But like it is backs to the wall stuff. It's just for, so frustrating probably for a manager or, or the players themselves that they're like, geez, why couldn't we do that the week before? Well, you know something that kind of, it's a bit like, uh, it's a bit like Waterford in 2022. No one could really put their finger on what exactly went wrong. It seems like in Wexford, nobody really is able to put their finger on what went wrong, apart from maybe a couple of injuries and stuff like that. So while Matt O'Han and Lee Chin Connor, uh, Lee Moog, McGovern, Dio Kiefer still on the pitch. They, they need to make hay because they could have a, a tricky couple of years when those players move on. So you'd, you'd hope that Keith Rossiter and the lads will hit the ground running straight away.